Well, God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you one more time. Rev Eddie here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, what a great day. What an awesome day. A marvelous day. A magnificent day the Lord has created. Amen. And let us rejoice and be glad in it. Is anybody out there glad that he woke you up this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. Depression gone in Jesus' name. PTSD gone in Jesus' name. Anxiety gone in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are getting praise reports from you guys out there that it's, it's just coming off. And I thank God that he's chose this vehicle to move into your lives, into your situations, into your heart and circumstances and that this power is coming forth and it is changing your lives. I'm telling you this word, read your word, read your word, read your word. It's life saving. It's life changing and it's life rearranging. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So a shout out to all of you that are following on YouTube. YouTube. We just thank God for each and every one of you, and we love you. And all of you on Facebook, my family, uh, Facebook family, friends, relatives, loved ones, thank God for each and every one of you. We love you. We're here for you. Amen. If you're on YouTube and you want to uh, reach me personally, uh, not online and discuss, but you want to keep it personal, I'm available. I'm here for you. And you can find me over on Facebook. Just search Rev Eddie, one word, no dash, no period, no space, Rev Eddie Wiggins on Facebook and message me and we'll exchange numbers and we'll chat it out, we'll shout it out, we'll pray it out, we'll cry it out, scream it out, whatever it takes, knowing that God is going to work it out. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, the kids are excited this morning. Are you excited? Things could be worse. Having been to hell, I'm telling you, every day is a wonderful day on earth. Amen. So it could be worse. And, you know, we think we're going through things and that it's rough and we can barely make it, but God's bringing us through. And I have found, even with all the horror that I've had to go through in my life, that the Lord's brought me through in my life, there's always somebody out there going through worse. Amen? So I just thank God that we're all here for another day, another opportunity to see his hand move miraculously in our situations. Amen? So let's get to this prayer list. God is just moving, and I am so thankful that uh, this is the way he wants to work. Amen? So keep all of these on these prayer lists lifted up in your prayers. A couple of podcasts to go up on YouTube. I gave the prayer list, and I think we've only, I don't know that it's changed at all. Okay, so you can catch the prayer list there, and as I say new names, just add them to your list. Amen. But uh, keep Charlotte and Dale up in your prayers. Oh, we got a shout out. Before we go to Australia and that huge audience we're getting over there, amen, let's go to my favorite island. I want to get warm in that sunshine, that heat. Boy, you ain't felt hot till you get in the Philippines. Amen. It is smoking, and I love that heat. What a beautiful island, the island of Mindanao. What a beautiful and strong and courageous people that God has there. Just beautiful people. Amen. And uh, Dipalog City, hello, hello, and God bless you. Palanco, God bless you. And all those under the sound of my voice, and it's Joe Ryan, Joe Ryan at Mix FM, 
that has made this opportunity available as he broadcasts this podcast through the air all throughout the uh, uh, areas over there through Dipalog City and the surrounding villages and cities and Polanco. We just thank God for you, Joe, and your heart to pump this word through the airways of Mix FM and get it into the hearts, minds, souls, and spirits of all of those, uh, all your audience and listeners. We thank God for you. Uh, we're still uh, searching for those transmitters. You guys pray for these transmitters for Joe's uh, uh, radio station so he can pump even harder and get a wider range. Amen. Contact yours. We got four more Christian radio stations we found that may be able to help us reach out to the radio stations no matter where you are on the planet. We'll figure out a way to get it to Joe and see if uh, they've got a transmitter they've replaced that's still in operating condition. We can get to him. Amen. And so uh, if you're in the Dipalog City area or Polanco and you have a business, you have a product or a service, and you need advertising, right now's the time. Reach out to Joe Ryan at Mix FM, and he'll work it out with you and get you a commercial and some advertising, and you can become more prosperous in your business. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Keep Pastor Nelia over there in Dipalog City up in your prayers. She's up in the mountains. She's all around. She's working with many uh, uh, of God's people over there ministering this true gospel. And she'll be coming on the air. Joe Ryan's going to give me the exact date for the programming. Amen. And so keep your eyes open. Should be. It's either June or July. I can't remember. I'll have to reach out to Joe and ask him. And write that down. But keep her lifted up in your prayers. To my knowledge, she's still looking for about 300 hollow bricks. If you've got them, and if you got a couple in the yard, it doesn't matter if you can buy a couple. Get those bricks, hollow bricks, and uh, more bags of cement so she can finish this church and continue to be a blessing to God's people. Amen. And we now, Charlotte and Dale, thank God for you and all you're doing for God's kingdom down under in Australia. We just love you. And uh, Samanga over there in Zambia with her Bible study, and we're just praying. She's asked for us to pray that those who would come and that the Lord would draw those to her who are hungry for the word and that uh, it would minister to their hearts. Because I'm telling you, this word is life-saving, life-changing, and life-rearranging. And we're praying for you, Samanga, and we thank God for you. Deborah Atwell, she's just on fire. She's doing a thing. She just don't know how to stop. <laughs> and that's good. This fire can't be put out, this Holy Ghost fire. And I'm just watching what she's doing and what she's sharing. And she is reaching out for the lost all through the Bahamas, and we just thank God for her ministry. Amen. And uh, Anna, what a blessing. And I heard from Elena Vasquez. Amen. And Anna did make contact with her, and they're just having a good time in the Lord. So if Anna reaches out to any of you, you know, because she's following the podcast, she sees the comments, she sees who's following is, and as the Lord leads her, she's a prayer warrior. We just thank God for her and what she's done in this ministry and how God is answering her prayers. And so if Anna reaches out to you, you know the Lord sent her, and it's going to be awesome. Amen. She's not a prowler. She's a prayer warrior. Amen. Thank God for you, Anna. Pray for her son, Jacob for complete deliverance and healing in every area of his life. And Maddie, amen, she's got some health issues and some struggles she's going through. Let's keep her lifted up in our prayers. Nick and Patrice over in uh, the uh, uh, beautiful country of Texas, 
amen, as they're ministering behind bars in those prisons, even getting to death row. Isn't God awesome to have that opportunity? And they've invited me to come and join them, and we'll be going possibly third week in uh, June. We'll let you know the dates. We won't be able to podcast for about nine or ten days as I'm there. So you keep me lifted up in prayer. I'm praying I can get to death row too and give my testimony. Amen. Uh, Coach Gecker, his lovely wife, Kay, I call her Dr. K, and all his family, relatives, and loved ones. He's my spiritual mentor, my coach from high school, and uh, one of my teachers in class. Amen. And he's still teaching, but teaching this word. Amen. And he's blessed this ministry so many times. I just thank God for him. Keep him up in your prayers. Laura, Laura Bolin, keep her up in your prayers. And Donna and her two sons, you have no idea what this woman has gone through and how the uh, devil has attacked her family. And just keep her lifted up for strength and endurance. Uh, to get through this and we're praying for absolutely complete healing and restoration for her two sons amen harvey carey and his wife rosie anthony on the ground i talked to him for hours last night we had a good time he and jamal amen keep them lifted up in your prayers as they're ministering on the streets of beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. Amen. Elena Vasquez and her son Nelly Vasquez. We're praying for complete healing and deliverance in uh, her son uh, Nelly. Amen. And Rod and his grandma, we enjoyed his visit. Amen. And his testimonies. Keep him up in prayer. He's, he's taking excellent care of his grandma grandma naomi let's all give her a shout out amen god bless you grandma naomi and all you've done in your life to be a blessing to god's people and a blessing to our lord and savior jesus christ in the kingdom of god i've got all her uh she gave me her library of uh uh teachings and books uh that uh, she used to minister to the kids in a youth ministry. Amen. I just thank God for her. Keep my sisters, my baby sisters, Jan and Karen, up in your prayers. Amen. And Sarah and the paramedic and Captain Haynes, keep them lifted up in your prayers. And Pastor Jody and her ministry, uh, Dorothy and her dad and her son Lee and they're praying for patience as they're going through. They need deliverance. Amen. And these are the founders of this ministry. Definitely keep them up in your prayers. Uh, Dr. Scott, Pastor Scott, amen, <laughs> and Founder Scott. He's a man of many hats. Keep him and his wife, Carolyn. Oh, she's a powerhouse for the Lord. She'll be preaching soon. And we're going to get her on here for her testimony. Very powerful testimony. And they got eight kids between them. And keep that family lifted up in your prayers, especially her daughter, Sarah. She's going through a trial, but she's coming out better than she went in. Amen. And Sarah has a daughter, Summer. Keep her lifted up in your prayers. Amen. And Keith and Jay Clark. Keep them up in your prayers. Cheyenne, Helena Gore, bless her heart. And Ladera, bless her heart. And uh, we'll be answering uh, some questions from Elena and Ladera today. Amen. And good question. And the devil's just after Ladera's family. Everybody's being attacked. So keep Ladera and her entire family lifted up. In your prayers, amen. And evangelist Tammy, keep her and her ministry lifted up in your prayers. And Ashley and her daughter and entire family and Lucia 
and Sasha, who are so dear to our hearts, keep them lifted up, April and her children, Dominique Moore and Billy Moore and E.S. And don't you forget to pray for Pastor Tim and uh, his wife Heather and their children, uh, uh, Haley and Jaden. Amen. Keep them lifted up. And the Thunder Twins, definitely keep them lifted up in your prayers. And Christina with a K, with Christ in her name and in her heart in Mississippi. Amen. Uh, keep her lifted up in your prayers. Keep this entire ministry lifted up in your prayers. Amen. And we're praying for Charlotte. They have a meeting, and I believe it's today. But see, Australia is ahead of us, so it might be Wednesday. But she has a meeting, and that meeting, just keep it lifted up. It's called Anzac. A-N-Z-A-C. I have no idea what that is, but I don't need to. God does. Amen. And they ask for prayer, so we're praying that it was a success. If it's already done, if it hasn't started, then we're praying that it will be a success. Glory to God. And we have Tim Clayton, Nancy Bullock, and Stephanie Deffer all diagnosed with cancer. Gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Doesn't matter the name of the disease. This is a healing and deliverance ministry. Doesn't matter the yoke, the addiction, the issue. It doesn't matter. Gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Tyler down under just on fire for the Lord and doing a thing. She thanks you for your prayers. She could feel them. And Wangui. In, in Melbourne, Australia. Amen. We thank God for her. And uh, you guys keep her lifted up in your prayers. Angelica Lewis, a longtime friend of mine from down under. Keep her lifted up in your prayers. Zarlia, we're waiting to hear a report. That's the 18-month-old baby that had uh, brain surgery a few days ago last week to remove a tumor. We're praying for absolute miraculous and speedy recovery and complete healing in Jesus name amen and Jesse from YouTube keep him lifted up in your prayers and Laura from YouTube and her daughter Micah boy her daughter is going through amen keep Micah lifted up in your prayers complete restoration and deliverance in Jesus name amen and Jean, healed from tumors, amen. And Ken, who lost his daughter, keep him lifted, lifted up in your prayers. Everybody's hurt. Everybody's got trials and tribulation. With or without Christ, there is a struggle just being here on this planet. With Christ, we're going to get through because he's watching over us and he loves us and there is nothing he won't do for any of us. Amen. So just know that in your heart. And so glory be to God. Are you ready to get into the word? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now we're going over, turn your Bibles to Matthew. And we're going to chapter 5. I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation for your ease. Amen. Now we're going to be answering one of Elena Vasquez's question okay and where she's at the question was uh, she's hearing preachers say no sin can enter heaven I say the same thing and she wants to know why and she gives an example if I say a little white lie then I can't go to heaven so we're going to answer this let's go to these, this scripture here we're in Matthew chapter 5, and we're going to verse 19 through 20. Amen? Now, this is in red. This is, this is out of the heart and off the lips of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Pay attention. Amen? So, verse 19 says, So if you ignore the least commandment 
and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, what is the Lord saying there? It's one thing. See, these Pharisees, Sadducees, teachers of religious law, these scribes of that day, oh, they were real good at telling others the law, (laughs) but not so good at following. You see what I'm saying? I've got a life application study guide. We'll get their view on this too, but let's finish this. Jesus continues in verse 20. He says, but I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, some might think, oh my, well, if our Obedience has got to be greater than the Pharisees who were just sticklers about this word. How will we ever get into heaven? They weren't. Jesus actually condemned them as hypocrites. They came against him saying that uh, they may have condemned themselves to hell when they accused him of operating under the power of uh, of the devil, Beelzebub, as they accused him of when he was operating under the power of the Holy Spirit, you see, which is that unforgivable sin, you see. And so they were not in any way righteous. They were self-righteous. Are you with me? They couldn't follow the law. And yet they got their hands out fining and bribing people for anything they could find wrong in their walk. Their hearts were so far from God. Their prayers were empty. God could see their lips moving. But he heard them not. See, it's Jesus brought it in in a different way. I don't want the law on stone. I want the law written on your heart these soft hearts. Don't obey me because it's written. Obey me because you love me. And there is that what's called legalism. We don't want to get into that. Some churches have fell into that. Some religions have fallen into that. That's not a safe place to be. God doesn't want children who like him. God wants children who love him. Amen? So, Let me share this with you further, okay? For verse 19, where it says, so if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Let's go to the study guide on that, amen? Some of those in the crowd were experts at telling others what to do, but they missed the central point of God's laws themselves. Jesus made it clear, however, that obeying God's law is more important than explaining them. It's much easier to study God's laws and tell others to obey them than to put them into practice. How are you doing? at obeying God yourself. Amen. I got another study guide for 2020 reads, but I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Ours is. Trust me, watch this. The Pharisees were exacting and scrupulous in their attempts to follow the law. So how could Jesus reasonably call us to greater righteousness than theirs? The Pharisees' weakness was that they were content to obey the laws outwardly without allowing God to change their hearts or attitudes inwardly. And Jesus knows our heart, you see. He's checking us on the inside. Yeah, we can stand on a street 
corner in self-righteousness and act in front of the people or the town or the village like we're all that holier than thou. But it's a walk. It's a lifestyle. What are you doing when you're not in front of the people? What's your life like then? How do you treat your wife, your kids? What's going on in the house? How about the people behind the counter at the pharmacy or the uh, uh, market or at the gas station? How are you treating them? How about when you're home, alone? Where's your heart at then? This is where the Lord wants us to become perfect. We're about to get in this. Amen. So Jesus was saying that his listeners needed a different kind of righteousness. It's not what they were displaying that is the righteousness that God seeks from us. Okay? Uh, It's a different kind of righteousness altogether. We do it out of love for God. They weren't there. So it's not the same kind. Theirs was self-righteousness. Look how they looked at Jesus when he told Matthew, we're going to have to go to your house for dinner tonight. Matthew called every criminal he knew because that was his hangout. He was a hated tax collector. So I imagine there were other tax collectors, thieves and liars and crooks and prostitutes and, you know, all kind of folk because he partied in his house because he had money. So he invited his friends to meet Jesus. Now the Pharisees see the crowd that, in Matthew's home, and they're like, "Uh uh-uh. And they asked his disciples, your master meets with this kind of scum? We wouldn't even have anything to do with them. And Jesus said, I didn't come for those who don't feel they're sick. (laughs) I came for those who know they're sick. Or, let's rephrase that, I didn't come for those that think that they're righteous. No. I came for those that know they're sinners. Because he came as a savior for all of us. And it's that humility, it's the brokenness, it's the horrors that have gone on in our lives. You see? That's what he's reaching out for. It's us he can work for, work work with. We're already broken. We are already in tears. We're already on our knees. They don't feel they need God. And so he leaves them alone. But those of us that are just begging for a miracle in our lives, yeah, we're the ones he's hugging on. Amen? So let me continue. Jesus was saying that his listeners needed a different kind of righteousness altogether out of love for God not just the more intense version of the Pharisees' obedience, which was mere legal compliance. Our righteousness must, number one, come from what God does in us, not what we can do by ourselves. That's the work of the Holy Ghost in us, changing us, forming us, shaping us, making us into these Christ-like figures that act of sanctification. We can't do it, and our trying to do it interferes with what the Holy Spirit can do, you see? And so, number two, he he wants our righteousness to be God-centered, not self-centered. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. No, no, no. Look at God, look at God, look at God. Look what he did in me. You know my testimony. I couldn't change myself. I couldn't heal myself. I couldn't deliver myself. So how dare I look down on anybody on this planet? You see what I'm saying? I know the way out of the trap. That's where I should be. The only time we look down on another person is because they're down and we're giving them our hands to lift them up and help them to their feet. Amen? So... Uh, Number three, be based on reverence for God, not approval from people. It's not the look at me. Thank you, Jesus, is where our hearts should be. 
as he saves us, heals us, delivers us, works miracles in our lives, sets us free, and renders us heaven bound. We didn't do that. He did that. We got to get out of the way and let him do that. That's where the dying in the, to the flesh is. It's not about us. It's about him. It'll always be about him. Amen. Number four, go beyond keeping the law to living by the principles behind the law. We should be just as concerned about our attitude that people don't see as about our actions that are seen by all. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right. So her second question is, if I say a little white lie, I can't get into heaven. <laughs> well, we don't want a lie. We don't want to bear false witness. God doesn't like that. Let me give you an example from Scripture. Amen. You remember King David, as he's running from Saul. He's not. A, a, he's been anointed since fourteen. He's not king. Okay, but he's running from Saul for his life. All right, and he ends up at, at uh, uh, with the, in front of a priest. He walks into a temple, and he's like, "We're hungry. Have you got any food?" And they're, they're like, "No, we only got this bread." Amen. Give it to us. It's the bread of the presence set aside for God, and then only priests could eat it, but they were hungry, and the priest fed them. God didn't have a problem with that, but he lied and asked for a weapon. He said he had left on a mission for Saul. That was the lie. He was running from Saul, and he asked for a weapon. He said, we didn't even have time to get weapons, and they said, we don't, we don't have any weapons, only the sword that you killed Goliath would, well, give that to me. And somebody saw this and reported it back to Saul. When Saul found out, he killed 87 priests and all their wives and children. Hundreds of people died over that little white lie. God doesn't want us to lie. Liars can't go to heaven. Amen? So, if we end up telling a lie, see, there's a difference between, well, you lied today to get out of this. There's a difference between that and a lifestyle of lying in which there is no truth in you. Everything you say is a lie. It's a big difference. And now that we're under grace and not this law, we can ask for forgiveness. You see, maybe you're telling a story and you stretch it out a little much. We hear some politicians doing that. They're, they can ask for forgiveness. Now, if they have a lifestyle of lying, they need deliverance. That lying spirit needs to come out of them. That's a big difference. You see what I'm saying? Your girlfriend might come up to you. Your wife. Do I look fat in this? Huh. Now, husbands know. This is not a question you want to answer ever. <laughs> you don't want to get into this. There's another question a wife might ask her husband. Which of my girlfriends, if I wasn't your wife, would you be interested in? Oh, fellas, please, please, please <laughs> don't answer that question. You see what I'm saying? Now, that puts the husband in these predicament. He loves his wife. He don't care what that girl wear. You see what I'm saying? He loves her, all of her. He loves her baggage. She loves, he loves her issues. That's true love. And now, she said, hey honey, she comes strolling in, you know, showing off this new dress. Does this dress make me look fat? Why? No, darling, it's a perfect fit. Oh, come here. I don't know if you're going to have that on much longer. It looks, you make that dress look good. It don't make you look good. You see what I'm saying? 
is it okay to tell her? <laughs> See, we're getting, we could, we could be getting some feedback from these wives out here. <laughs> okay. You're putting us in the position. No, honey. You make the dress look good. It doesn't make you look good. Now, maybe it did make her look a little fat. You know what I'm saying? We're getting into dangerous territory. Let's not put us, put ourselves in a position where we have to lie. Because liars can't get into heaven. Amen? Her question was, no sin can enter heaven, she's hearing preach. That's true. If we have a lifestyle, I, I, I'll tell you where to go. Let's go to Galatians 5 and 16. And we've been there talking about uh, becoming one with the Spirit, living by the Spirit of God. But let's skip down to verse 19. Okay? When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. We're in Galatians 5 and 19. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, which comes up witchcraft, which translates from the Greek to pharmakia, pharmakan, pharmakon, which is the pharmacy, the pharmacist, the pharmaceutical. Amen. Uh, we talked about this. Hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life, that's important. Anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. There's a difference between a lifestyle and let's say you're a Christian and you've got your walk tight with the Lord. You're living uh, uh, a great life being obedient to the Lord. But they have an office party and you normally don't drink, but your boss has been very impressed with your work. And there's a promotion and he wants to hand this over to you, and he pops a bottle of champagne. Let's drink to it. You don't want to offend him, so you figure you just take a sip. That was some good stuff he opened up. And maybe you got a little tipsy. Maybe you got out there, and you had a bad e evening and woke up with a headache. That's not a lifestyle. That's an incident. Yes, we can try to prevent those best we can, but we we do slip. That's why we need the power of God working in our lives. Amen? But that's not a lifestyle. That's not what we have just read in Galatians. You know, maybe your wife uh, uh, picked a nice restaurant for your uh, anniversary, talking to the men, and we go to the restaurant. We, she orders a nice bottle of wine or whatever, and because you don't drink, bam, it hit, and it hit hard, and Maybe you knocked some things off the table and people started noticing. That's not a lifestyle. You understand what I'm saying? And so it doesn't excuse our behavior. We want our behavior to represent the Lord and this word the best we can, but situations and issues arise. Don't beat yourself up or cut your throat over situations like these. Ask the Lord to forgive you and keep on rolling. We're under grace. He will forgive you. Amen? We just don't want to get into that, and it's a constant every 10 minutes, forgive me, forgive me. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So uh, th there will be no sin in heaven. Absolutely not. So we do want to live by this word, and the Holy Ghost gives us the strength to do that as he's cleaning us up, as he's crucifying our flesh. Amen? So I pray that answers your questions, Elena. Now, Jay made a comment, and I wanted to clarify this. He says that Marianne Baxter, in her book about hell, saw children. We're talking about yesterday's podcast about the age of accountability. He said that she saw children there at about the age 16. 
could that be a age of accountability? Well, I can't say that that's not a safe assumption. 16. I believe at 16, in a lot of cases, that an individual would know the difference between right and wrong, between good and evil. Amen? But the Bible doesn't put an age. I'm not either. And that's really between them and God. I'm not into judging and picking on folks. You know, it, your walk is between you and God. I'm trying to walk my walk. How can I do mine and live a life pleasing to God, focused on her and him and them and they? Uh -uh. You see what I'm saying? I can preach this word and teach this word. What you do with it is between you and God. I can tell you my testimony and what God has done in my life and where he has led me to walk, just like Paul does in these letters. But it's up to you to make that decision. We can't make anyone do anything. We don't have the power to do that. I didn't see any children in hell. So I can't say that there's children in hell because I didn't see one. I saw a lot of people. None of them were children. Now, if that's what God revealed to me, that's why I don't watch other hell testimonies. What God showed me is what I re have revealed to you. What they've seen when, they've, when he's shown them hell may not be what he's shown me, and I'm not going to come against their testimony. That's why I don't listen to them. I don't want to know what he showed them. I want my testimony pure. You see what I'm saying? A virgin giving it to you. Only what I saw, not what I've heard other people say. I didn't see any kids. Amen? So, uh, Ladera asks, and she's got a couple of good questions here. Do angels really watch over us? Well, we talked about that yesterday in the podcast. Turn your Bibles over to Psalm 91. Amen. Do angels really watch over us? Now, there's been some incidents since I got out of hell and something happens to me and I'm thinking, all right, angels, you, you would y'all go on break? You at Mickey D's? Where y'all at? You didn't see this about to occur? You know what I mean? <laughs> I've, hey, you know what I mean? I understand where you're coming from because if they're watching, how come so much is happening to us? But Ladera, yes, angels are watching over us. Now, we read yesterday where Jesus said, don't you know each of these children have angels that go before God's throne and report what's happening to these children of his? That's how important kids are. Now, if they have angels and they're growing, does that mean the angels leave? Perhaps at the age of uh, accountability, now you don't have angels. I believe those angels are placed on you. They are watching over you before you're born, in your mother's womb. The moment you hit your mother's womb, those angels are watching out and warring against these demons to make sure you come out of that mother's womb. Amen? And watch you your entire life. Oh, so what does the Bible say? Well, this is why I feel that from toddlers on up, <laughs> you've got angels. And it says in verse 11, but let's back up. Let's get the flavor of Psalm 91, okay? Let's read the whole thing. This is, in a deliverance ministry, we have three psalms that we really attach ourselves to. Number one, Psalm 91. Number two, Psalm 27. Number three, Psalm 37. So in a deliverance ministry, a healing ministry, those are all warfare psalms. Amen? Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Now, I like this out of the King James, but leaving these uh, headphones on, my King James is over there on the study table. 
So I, I like it better, and I don't have any, I don't have any guests on to get it. So we're going to read it out in the New Living Translation. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. Now, he used his angel to protect us as well. Amen? Know that. But let's continue. Okay? For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. And he will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, Though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home, for he will order his angels ladder. He will order his angels. Come on now. He will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. She asked. This was her question. Do angels really watch over us? For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. Wherever you go. For as long as you go. Whenever you go, they're there. Yes. Amen? They will hold you up in their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. Amen? I, this is my favorite part because this is God talking to us. Amen? The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. <laughs> Hallelujah. She has a uh, second question here. She said, she asked, Good question, Ladera. The reason I love the questions, uh, uh, especially these, because a lot of people ponder these. I've pondered these. And I think that there's others out there that would be blessed by these questions and uh, the answers therewith from God's word. Amen? And so don't ever, uh, one of my guys, uh, Pastor Tim in our Bible study, he says, the only dumb question is the one you never ask. And I used to tell for years in our Bible studies at the churches and with the kids, adults and kids alike, there is no silly question. There is no dumb question when it comes to God or this word or the walk. Amen? So, <coughs> uh, I pray that answer that we're going to... Uh, Revelation, we did a lot of Bible today, huh? We in this word. Go to Revelation chapter 21 and verse 4. Revelation 21 and 4. Now, Ladera's question is, is there really no suffering in heaven? Amen? Let's answer that, all right? I'm going to back up so you get the flavor of where this is coming from. You know, I hate plucking a verse out and building a doctrine on it. Let's get the flavor of the whole thing. So I'm going to go to 21 and 1 and read all the way through 4. All right? 
and maybe I'll go to five or six. I just love the book of Revelation. And so it says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Gone. So there it is, Ladera. In God's word, there will be no suffering in heaven. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now they had one more question. And I believe this was from Elena. And I'm glad we have time to answer this. Uh, Back in Matthew 5 and 48. Go back to Matthew 5 and 48. All right. And I preached on this one Sunday. This is important. And 5 and 48 says, But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. That's Matthew 5 and 48. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. God is perfect. Amen? And as his children... (laughs) We're to be perfect. But then we look at ourselves and say, huh, can I ever be perfect, right? So how, what is this? (laughs) Why is this here? This seems impossible. But watch this. This is how this word perfect breaks down. I looked it up in the Greek, amen, because this is in the New Testament. Now this state of perfection is a, process it's reaching for the state of perfection as an ongoing process is that definition so let me give you an example you go to a carpenter and you say I need a dining room table and I need it to be perfect you know we've got some extra money and we really want you to put your heart into this And so the carpenter agrees to make this table. So he goes out into the yard to look for that tabletop. And he's got a pile, and he's peeling them back. And, ah, too much water damage. It'll take too long. Oh, too many grinds and grounds and scratches and dents and dings. Ah, too much work. Oh, perfect. He finds one with minimal scratches, not too deep. Beautiful coloring, beautiful grains to be exposed, and no water damage. So he pulls that piece out, takes it into his wood shop, lays it across the table, and goes to bed. As of right now, that's the perfect tabletop. But in the morning, when he gets out there with his coffee, and he's looking at it, and he sees just how much work it's going to take to bring the beauty out. It's no longer perfect. So he brings out that 80 sandpaper so he can get to it quick. You know what I'm saying? And get every scratch. And he works all day bringing it down to perfection. And he runs his hand along that top. There's no more dings. There's no more dents. There's no more scratches. He's looking at it. It's perfect. Goes to bed. At that state, that tabletop is perfect. But when he wakes up in the morning, that thing ain't perfect. 
because he sanded it with 80. It's not smooth. It's got to be smooth as a uh, uh, as glass. So he works that table all day with the 120, smoothing it and getting it nice. He sees a little scratchy mist, and he's working that wood and working that wood, and at the end of the day, he runs his hand across. That baby is smooth now. It's perfect. Turns out the light and goes to sleep. The next day when he wakes up, he goes out there. We got to hit it with the 220. That was 120, but it needs to be mirror smooth without a single defect, and he works it all day. So you see this process. It's a process, this perfection, and it is the work of the Holy Spirit that perfects us. Christ is perfect. We're under his blood. <laughs> God sees us without blemish. We've gone through it in our series of how God views us under the blood. We're without spot. We're without blemish. We are without sin. Amazing. Okay? And we stand before his throne without a single fault under the blood. So we are, he said it, we're holy. We're righteous. Are you with me? We're blood-bought children of the Most High God. He redeemed us with his blood. You see how it always has to go back to the cross and his work on that cross. And you can't add anything to that cross. But your faith in him and you're inviting the Holy Spirit to work in you. You're getting into this word. Read your word. Read your word. Read your word. The power is in this word. Amen. And so as you become one with him, he's perfect. Now you're perfect. He's righteous. Now you're righteous. He's living in you. Come on now. He's holy. And you're holy. <laughs> you see, stay under the blood. Amen. Okay, so we're a little over time. I pray that we answered everyone's questions. Anybody out there got questions? We love them. And we want you to know and get God's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of this word. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for keeping us in it. And I thank you for everyone that you drew here by the authority, the power, and the anointing that you have placed upon this ministry and upon my life. I speak healing. Let this anointing you put on me go forth, Father. Healing. I don't care what the doctor calls it. Go right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Your people need deliverance, Lord. Some of them are strung out on this, that, and the other. They can't get off whatever it is. I don't care if it's alcohol, street drugs, drugs, prescription drugs. I don't care. It could be mental. It could be PTSD, anxiety, depression. We don't care. Gone in the mighty name of Jesus right now, Father. Heal and deliver and set free thy people. Break every yoke of the enemy that he has on your people, that they may be free to obey this word, free to love you and free to serve you in Jesus' name. Every stronghold of the enemy torn off right now in Jesus' name. Every chain falling off, landing on the cement. Can you hear that chain clanging on the floor? Chains broken right now in the mighty name of Jesus prison doors open, prisoners set free. Those sitting in the dark, Lord, go in there in your marvelous light, light that dark place up, grab them by the hand and pull them out into your light. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. And the church said together, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for each and every one of you. We'll be back tomorrow. Amen. But until we do get back, can you do me a favor? Have a wonderful day, a glorious day, a marvelous day, a magnificent day. And 
Jesus unless you've already made other plans.